What if I told you that one of the coolest running stores in Los Angeles doesn't sell anything? Coming up, we'll be talking about Blue Ribbon Sports and five cool things that you should know. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here, and today we're gonna be talking about Blue Ribbon Sports. But before we get into that, today is episode two of Jordan Runs LA, where as I get prepared for the big LA 5K, which happens the day before the Los Angeles Marathon. So if you're interested in my training, some tips and tricks uh, for runners, as well as stories like the one we're doing to do today about running culture, you wanna make sure that subscribe button, as well as that notification bell, that way you know when the latest episode is available. Now, let's talk about Blue Ribbon Sports. It's been 50 years since the store originally opened up its doors. And back in the, towards the end of January, the store reopened. And so I've had a few opportunities to spend some time in the space with teammates. And I wanted to go over five cool things. Number one, this was Nike store number one. Before Nike was Nike, it was Blue Ribbon Sports. See, back in the day, Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman used to be distributors for this company called Onatsuka. I'll write it up there, but we also now know it as ASICS. Once that relationship had run its course, Phil recognized it was time to create his own business. And so that takes us to number two. The first Nike employee was actually responsible for helping name the store Nike. And that honor goes to Jeff Johnson. Jeff Johnson was not only the manager of Blue Ribbon Sports, but he convinced Phil and others that using the word Nike because of some research he had done about companies with two syllables and with a K um, sound in there would be a good name for a company. It was word on the street is that Phil Knight wanted to name the company Dimension Six, which definitely sounds like an old school rock band. And so I'm glad that my Jordans don't say Dimension Six, Air Jordan Six. That would be just confusing. Number three, the new manager is also named John Jefferson. He was an elite runner for Nike. We're stuck over here. We're stuck over here. Also a photographer, and you can't tell me that's not pretty crazy, and it's something that Coach Blue um, pointed out. He's also a crazy fast mile, running as fast as three minutes and 56 seconds in the mile, like 224 for the marathon. Let's talk about the most surprising thing. There's nothing for sale. No card reader, no register, no way to exchange money. There's nothing to purchase. I was actually in need of purchasing some shoes on that particular day, and so this was a big surprise for me. And so I was like, oh, okay, you don't sell regular merchandise, but at least you sell BRS t-shirts, right? Right? No, nothing for sale. But that's totally okay. And why? That's because number five is that this is a running community first location. I like what Coach Blue had to say about it. I'm saying this isn't meant to be a museum. It's meant to be lived in. It's, it had a library of all of his books, running and not. And so that's why we have this library. It's kind of a throwback to this idea of having like running books and always reading and studying the sport. So we encourage people to take the books, check them out. Even take them with you, take them home, bring them back later. We start our workouts. Show sure, filmmakers they can that do both. Case, huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, have fun. We go get the work in and we come back and we hang out. We take advantage of some of the recovery tools that are there. There's lots of stuff to see, touch, experience. There's even like the old school track and field arcade game in there. All kinds of like <laughs> sneakers. I think there's like this model type situation of like Nike yeah. Cortez, which back in the day was supposed to be like the world's best running sneaker, which is like crazy to me because I can't imagine running in those. But anyway, just seeing all this like running history and also just seeing really cool like LA history. As a person who's recently moved here and is only ever experienced LA by a couple of visits and by frankly television shows and movies, it's good to see like what actually is influencing the LA experience from the perspective of runners. And so being able to spend time with fellow runners and talk about, of course, running, but also talk about life, it's a really cool thing to have a place to go do that. So if you're gonna be in Los Angeles sometime soon, I would encourage you to check out the Nike Run Club app, go in the events section, and keep an eye out for various events. I do know that for the last few weekends, there's usually been two type of events going on. Usually during the morning, there's usually a team that's associated with a morning run. All you have to do is RSVP and you're in there. And then there's also like some open hours. And so if you're not coming for a run and just want to just check out the space, and it's free, you know, so you just gotta just take advantage of those events uh, when they're available. So quick training update for me. So this week I'm on track for another 40 mile week. I've got a long run tomorrow. I did a tempo run on Thursday. On Tuesday I did speed work and so doing some easy runs on the way. Like I said, I'm gonna keep mixing these up and so this week is primarily driven for the culture. Um, so I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace. Oh, natural stuff. Just, just I heard, I heard <laughs>